In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to build a card element and see how to use it in designs that we can create with the new responsive controls. Card elements are a popular component that apps use for varying reasons. For instance, thumbnails of videos or posts like you see on the Academy, or like in our repeating group examples, we use cards to showcase different movies. With the new responsive controls, they are very easy to build. So for our example, we'll build a card component and use it in a pricing table. To do this, we'll add a group on the page with the container layout set to row. The page itself is a column, so we can stack other groups on top or on bottom of our pricing table. We'll uncheck fixed width for the group. In doing so, our group automatically grows to its max width, which is currently infinite. So it fills the parent container, which here is our page. We do this so we can use the entire group as the section to hold our cards. Let's also increase the height of this group. You can use the up down arrow keys to increment by one, or if you hold shift, you can increment by five. Now we have a group to hold our cards, so let's build the card directly inside it. First, we draw the group to resemble a card and give it a name. Remember, we can always adjust the width and height afterwards, so it doesn't have to be perfect as you draw it. Card designs generally follow a top to bottom approach, so a column layout is recommended and what we'll set here. However, other card designs may go left to right, in which case a row or a line to parent would be more fitting. Because our parent container group is a row, we'll align this card with the row's container alignment controls to center it so it's in the middle of our group. By default, our card group has a fixed width, and as we saw with our parent group, when we uncheck it, it will stretch to its max width, which is infinite. For our card, we'll set a min width and a max width. The min width is how small this card can shrink to, and the max width is how large it can grow to. This gives us a lot more control and makes it responsive versus if we leave it as fixed. And if we wanted, we can also check fit width to content, so the card will go to its min width or the size of the child elements we'll add in. Finally, I'll increase the min height so we have more room to work with, and for now we'll let the max height grow infinite with the elements within. Now I'll go ahead and add a few text elements and a button to make this look more like a pricing card. When you do this, be sure that your child elements are not using a fixed width, so when the page shrinks, they shrink to their min width instead of staying fixed and breaking out of the card. Now if we copy and paste this card a couple times, we have the start of a pricing table. And because these cards are in a row, they will automatically respond by wrapping down to other rows as the page resizes. To start adding some polish to this, we could select all three groups and add some left and right margin and apply it all at once to give each card some breathing room. This is a great technique for spacing out the cards. But keep in mind, because they're in a row, we can take advantage of using the space around alignment to give equal space between each child element without needing to add margin to give us the same effect. With alignments handled by the row, we can use margin to space out the elements within the pricing card to help our design feel more natural. It's important to keep in mind that there are multiple ways to achieve spacing, so pick which solution best works for you. Finally, we can add margin to the top and bottom of the card, and we can vertically align child elements of a row. So for our card, we'll vertically align this to the center of the row. I'll copy and paste this again, and now we have our responsive pricing table. If we preview this, our parent group grows infinitely, and our cards go along with it. This is because the hierarchy of the parent element passes down to the child elements. For instance, our group that holds our cards has an infinite max width. And since the row alignment is space around, it will maintain equal distance between each child element in the end of the page. Since the group can infinitely grow, our cards will infinitely grow with it while keeping the space around alignment. This may not be your desired result. Adding a max width to the parent container controls how wide the cards will be viewed in run mode. We can do this on our group and set it to whatever max width we'd like. This is a direct relationship from your child elements to your parent container. When we preview the page, we can see the result. However, the screen size we're viewing this at is larger than the max width we set. To account for that, we'd need to set the page property called width for UI builder so we can accurately build with whatever the page would look like. When I increase this property, we can see that since our group no longer stretches to the page, it uses its horizontal alignment controls, which by default is set to left. So let's change that to center and preview. While our pricing table looks better, if we added a border to this group, it still may not be the intended result. So another approach would be to leave this at an infinite max width and group the cards again. 
When we have elements selected and go to group them together, with the new responsive engine, we must choose to group with a specific container layout in mind. This allows the child elements properties to remain the way they are on the page while being grouped. For this, we'll group these cards as a row container, and then we'll set our new group's container alignment. We'll also adjust our min width, and since our parent group has an infinite max width, we want to set a max width for this new group so it doesn't go infinite to the parent container. To see this, we uncheck fit width to content. Now our topmost parent group has an infinite max width, and to see this, I'll set a background color. When we preview the page, see how this looks. We have one group that goes infinite to the page and another that has a max width that holds our cards. All of this maintains the same responsiveness that we had before. Components such as cards are now infinitely easier to achieve, and with the container layouts, they're responsive out of the box. That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out Bubble Academy.